are going to discuss about recombinant DNA technology. Recombinant DNA technology, also known as genetic engineering, is the set of techniques that enable the DNA from different sources to be identified, isolated, and recombined so that new characteristics can be introduced into an organism. Now, what is a recombinant DNA? Recombinant DNA is a form of artificial DNA that is created by combining two or more sequences. It is made possible by two important enzymes. Restriction enzymes and DNA ligases are two principal tools used in genetic engineering first used by Paul Berg in 1972, employed to alter DNA. Later, in 1973, Boyer and Cohen developed recombinant DNA technology. One important aspect in recombinant DNA technology is DNA cloning. DNA cloning is a set of techniques that are used to assemble recombinant DNA molecules and to direct their replication within host organism. DNA cloning is the production of a large number of identical DNA molecules from a single ancestral DNA molecule. The essential characteristics of DNA cloning is that the desired DNA fragment must be selectively amplified resulting in a large increase in copy number of selected DNA sequence. Essentially, two different DNA cloning approaches are used. First is cell-based DNA cloning and second is cell-free DNA cloning via PCR. PCR is a revolutionary technique used for selective amplification of specific target sequence of nucleic acids by using short primers. Cell-based DNA cloning was the first form of DNA cloning to be developed and is an in vivo cloning method. The essence of cell-based DNA cloning involves these steps. Firstly, a DNA fragment containing the gene of interest, here it is human insulin gene is obtained from a donor cell or genomic library or cDNA library. Secondly, a suitable plasmid is obtained from a bacterium. Plasmids are extra-chromosomal DNA that are commonly used as a vector to transfer the gene of interest into a host cell for expression. Here I have isolated our plasmid from E. coli bacterium. So this is our gene of interest, that is human insulin gene, that was cut from the DNA fragment using restriction enzyme. This enzyme acts like scissor. It recognizes a specific base sequence and cut the DNA at specific point. On the other hand, uh, the same restriction enzyme is used to cut open the plasmid. The DNA fragment containing the gene of interest is inserted into the open plasmid with the help of another enzyme called DNA ligase. This enzyme acts like glue. It catalyzes the joining of DNA fragment and the plasmid, a recombinant plasmid is finally formed. Third step is the introduction of this recombinant plasmid into a suitable host. There are different gene transfer methods by which we can introduce our vector into a suitable host via using physical, chemical or transformation gene transfer methods. Physical methods like electroporation, microinjection, liposome mediated gene transfer, chemical gene transfer, method via calcium chloride mediated or polyethylene glycol mediated or via transformation. We have now our insulin gene incorporated into vector so we need to introduce this recombinant plasmid into the host most often and the host is bacterial cell as it is simple to manipulate. Now we have genetically modified E. coli with our insulin gene inserted inside the vector. This process is called as transformation. After transformation, we will be getting three types of colonies. Non-transformed bacterial cell without any change, transformed bacterial cell with unaltered vector and transformed bacterial cell with recombinant vector. This is the colony we need to select from rest of the colonies. There are different ways by which we could select these. First, by growing them in antibiotic resistant medium or by visible characters or if it is an enzyme, we will add substrate, it will change the color in some colonies by colony hybridization and by blotting test. Thank you for watching this video. Please do like and subscribe this channel.